Hi, everybody. I'm Andrew Goble. I am one of York's bike guys. And my shirt was designed by Tetra Design Co. You can get one on all platforms, and the proceeds benefit the York County Rail Trail. <laughs> Peanuts creator Charles M. Schultz said, life is like a 10-speed bicycle. Most of us have gears we never use. I was never very mechanically inclined, despite growing up with a dad who could fix or build just about anything. So I fell in love with fixing up vintage bicycles about 15 years ago, pretty randomly. I was at a flea market when this lovely old bike shouted to me from a pile of someone else's junk, save me! The seller said it just needed a little TLC. I took their word for it and took it to the local shop where the mechanic tactfully told me what it needed to get back on the road. I thanked them and left with my unrideable bike. I didn't have the money. So brokenness and determination fanned my first little DIY spark into a raging fire. I researched repairs, tore down, polished, and lubricated every part on that bike. I was too busy riding and proud of her new lease on life to notice it was way too small for me and not comfortable, at least for a few hundred miles. As other project bikes kept finding me, I realized I liked working on them at least as much as riding them. They weren't broken, they just needed a little TLC. And I loved the sense of freedom and self-sufficiency they gave me for knowing the balance of tension and friction their networks of neglected cables longed for. By the time I realized firsthand they really don't make them like they used to, I was down the rabbit hole. It was like the engineers and marketers had spent decades proving to motorists and cyclists that they could, never stopping to ask themselves if they should. I found simpler bikes elegant, their swappable parts empowering, and even an outlet for expressing myself. H.G. Wells said, every time I see an adult on a bicycle, I no longer despair for the future of the human race. Suddenly, folks I was meeting through my new hobby were renewing my faith in humanity, and my favorites were the ones keeping older bikes on the road. Oftentimes, folks without cars, folks like Vince, who ran a free bike repair booth at York's Central Market, or Ross, who founded Recycle Bicycle to offer free repairs and training to underserved riders in and around Harrisburg. His annual ride of silence, pushing for safer roads, ends on the steps of the state capitol where one ghost bike, spray-painted white, is installed for each cyclist killed in Pennsylvania traffic that year. Ross heard that me and some friends were doing free pop-up tune-ups at community events, and he made sure we never ran out of spare parts. And so Bike York was born, promoting bikes for fun, fitness, and transportation and getting the word out about bike-friendly initiatives. We even handed out maps of downtown bike lanes, trails, and bike racks. Some of the greatest people I've ever met feel, like me, that bikes are the indicator species of a community, like shellfish in a bay, friends in public health championing accessibility, friends planning and designing streets, and friends protesting in those same streets riding against violence and helping city kids feel a part of something larger than themselves. One year, after hitting up a huge bike swap attended by thousands, my friend Chris thought we should do something similar. So he single-handedly planned the inaugural Yoko cycle swap. We'd accrued so many bits and bobs customizing our bikes, this was the perfect chance to get rid of all of our spare parts, or at least take someone else's home. It was a joy meeting people who, like me and Grant Peterson, think of bikes as rideable art that can just about save the world. These chunky 80s friction shifters look dope, and they'll never need adjustment. And my mom's old mongoose rides so much nicer with these big, swoopy handlebars. The orange cables and grips are just for show, but come on. <laughs> I've volunteered running spin art bikes, too, and that's always a blast. You don't have to know the first thing about riding a bike or painting, and then suddenly you're doing both and creating just the most beautiful art. I love hearing the oohs and ahs as people from all walks of life realize there's no wrong way to do any of this. Some of my most memorable rides I've done over and over again. I struggled to find work after graduating from college and wound up getting a sales job with T-Mobile. When angry customers or the monotony started getting to me, I thought it might help to start every day with some fresh air and exercise by riding to work, and it did. Other rides started from work and went the other way. Speaking from experience, it's amazing what a little time out of the office with your colleagues can do for creativity and morale. 
Here, me and my team had ridden the rail trail from our downtown office to check out a friend's art exhibition at York College on bikes, I would argue, that matched our personalities perfectly. Coleman McCartley called bicycles the first machine we master as children and the one we abandon when the seductions of the automobile take over. I used to look forward to bike to school day in New York City all year where children, children learn solidarity, bike safety, and at least for a few short blocks, what it feels like to belong in the street on a bike. But there's something truly magical about nearly 30 miles of belonging, no matter your bike, far away from the road. I've had most of my favorite rides here, amidst weathered metaphors for pastoral America, reminders of the kindness of strangers, and the literal birthplace of ice cream. Who knew? I ride more often and I waste less food when getting my groceries by bike, too. Meal planning seems more practical when you have to carry everything you buy. And I tend to make healthier choices, sometimes. Did I earn the Ben and Jerry's or waste the ride? Well, neither. I love commuting with nature. When was the last time you crossed paths with a frog en route to the grocery store? Earning Hemingway said, it's by riding a bike that you learn the contours of a country best. I've felt this, and even time traveled by bike, through the hallowed grounds of Gettysburg with a tick, tick, ticking hub as my drummer boy, or bustling New Orleans, where Café Dumont's beignet recipe hasn't changed in over 100 years, because it hasn't had to. My dad and I like marking special occasions with a ride, like his birthday here, where we stop for a drink just as a mom and dear and her fawn did the same. My dad rides a newfangled pedal-assisted e-bike, but he's still riding. get places you can only get to by bike, which I think Francis Willard said best as sharing hardships and rejoicing in the poetry of motion through landscapes breathing nature's inexhaustible charm and skyscapes lifting the heart from what is to what shall be hereafter. And I'd like you to look for this feeling on any ride on any bike. Thanks. Thanks.